Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished doing almost all the math problems from this book. If there is any math problem at all that gives you trouble and if you wish to watch the solution to it, you will find the solutions to almost all the math problems from this book from day number 251 through 400. From day 251 through 400. This book happens to contain the exact same problem in most cases and again in most cases appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from this book in the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find all the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Day 1 through 250, original solutions tend to be a little lengthier, they tend to be a little bit more in depth. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions have not gone away, they are still a big chunk of the exam, they are a very important part of the exam. Unfortunately for us, the newer books do not provide us with enough quantitative comparison questions to practice on. For that reason, from day number 401, we began solving some questions from here. The 10th edition of the general GRE. Right now, we are on page number 328. Please turn to it. Page number 328, the very first problem that you see there, problem number 10 in the first column. The problem is already on the blackboard. This is how the problem goes. I'm going to read the problem to you, and then I'm going to get out of, get out of your way. I want you to pause the video at that point once, once we finish setting up the problem. I want you to pause the video, solve the problem yourself, and then compare your work against the work that you and I are about to do in a few seconds. You must do that in every single problem, whether I remind you or not. Do you understand? You must pause the video instinctively as soon as I finish setting up the problem. Here we go. We are given a triangle, a triangle PQR. In the triangle PQR, we have two segments, segment QS and segment SR. We are told that segment QS bisects angle PQR. P Q R that angle P Q R is bisected by the segment Q S. In other words, it cuts in two equal parts. Similarly, we are told the segment R S segment R S bisects this angle right here, angle P R Q. Angle P R Q is bisected by segment R S. What we are being asked to compare is the quantity x versus y. We are told that angle P is 80. I'll shut up now. Do the problem yourself. I'll give you five seconds to pause and then pause the video. Okay, here we go. What we need to understand is that what we need to understand is that the fact that we are told that it bisects it, bisects means exactly what it means, what it, what it says, bisects means to cut in two equal parts. If this is x degrees, then so is this one. So is this one. This is also x degrees. Which means angle Q, angle Q is simply angle Q is simply 2x degrees. Similarly, angle R, if this is y degrees, then this is also y degrees. And therefore angle R is 2y degrees. Angle P we know is 80 degrees. And what do we know about the sum of the angles in a triangle? We know that sum of the angles in any kind of triangle have to add up to 180. So that's what we're going to do here. This angle Q, angle Q is 2x degrees, 2x plus 2y plus 80 has to add up to 180. We see 2 here, we see 2 here, we see 1 over 80, which is, this is all divisible by 2. Let's divide the entire equation by 2. If we divide the entire equation by 2, what we end up is x plus y plus 40 equals 140. I must have made a mistake. This is not what I have originally. Ah, 180 divided by 2 is not 140. I am not a math person, you understand? Let's subtract 40 from both sides. Subtract 40 from both sides, what we find is that x plus y equals 50. Now the question is, here's the question. What, so the question, what the question boils down to is this. This is what the question boils down to. Question, what the question boils down to is that I walk, I walk up to you and I tell you that I'm thinking of two numbers. I'm thinking of two numbers whose sum has to, happens to be 50. I'm thinking of two numbers that add up to 50. Can you tell me which one is bigger? 
to which you will say, what the hell? How the hell do I know which one is bigger? All I do is I come up to you and I tell you I'm thinking of two numbers in my head. I'm telling you that they add up to 50. Is there any way for you to tell which one is bigger? Of course not. They may both be equal to each other. Then one may be... You get the idea. The answer is D. Simply by knowing this, simply by knowing the sum of the two quantities, then it does not enable us to tell which one is bigger and which one is smaller. They, may, they, may, they might both be equal. They might be 25 and 25. Or one is bigger than the other. Who knows? Number 11. The next one. Same thing again, as soon as I finish setting up the problem number 11, pause the video immediately, even if I forget to tell you to do that. Number 11. Number 11, when it appeared in the exam, only about half the people had luck, luck with it. Number 11. And I said only about half the people had luck with it. We're given a picture here. I'm going to reproduce the picture as it appears in the exam. This is exactly this is exactly how it appears appears in the exam, which is why we have to take our time. I cannot give you I cannot give you anything more, I cannot give you anything less. This is exactly how you see it, this is how the line shows up, oh, everything is there. 25 feet we are told this side is, and this side we are told is 15 feet. Remember, the pictures, the pictures in the GRE are not drawn to scale. You must keep that in mind, which is why this side is, is labeled as 15 feet, even though from here to here is 25 feet. Did I leave out anything? I cannot leave out anything at all, otherwise it will not be a fair game. Another important piece of element, uh, important, important element uh, that, is, that, we, that we need here in order to go somewhere else with it is to know that all the angles where two lines meet, all of them, we are told, every one of them, we are told, two lines meet at 90 degrees, which is very, very important bit of information. What we are being asked to compare is this. Column A, we are told to compare the area Switch here, area of the of the floor, area of the floor right here that is shown, this is our column A, versus column B, versus column B, which is 350 square feet, 350 square feet. In other, in other words, we're being asked to compare, we're being asked to, we're being asked here whether the area of this floor is equal to less than or more than 350 square feet. One more time, I'm going to get out of your way before I... These are all right angles. This is 20 feet, this is 25 feet, this is 15 feet. This is all we are told. It's time for me to shut up. I'll give you five seconds to pause and then pause the video. Okay, here we go. The simplest, easiest, the quickest way to tackle this thing is to make this into a uh, finish this picture up okay now what's the area of what's the area of a b c d how much is it well it's right here it's right here the area of this a b c d where's my pointer the area of this thing a b c d is right here it's 20 by 25 so it's 20 by 25 that's that part now we have to simply subtract this part right here we have to simply subtract that part but this side we know from here to here we know is 15 feet we, have, we were told that this is 15 do we know this side let's give it a name so we can talk about we have a b c d let's call them let's call them p and q do we know this side from p to q the answer is we do not know what p to q is we do know what q to r is q to r q to r we are told is 15 but p to q is a question mark P to Q is a question mark. Let's call it X. So how do we represent the area of the floor? The area of the floor is going to be the big square that you see here. A, not the square necessarily, but the big rectangle. A, B, C, D, which is 20 by 25. Minus the area of the small guy, which is 15 by X. Minus 15 by X or 15X. Can you compare this quantity with 350? The answer, of course, is no. How can we compare? We know we need to know what x is. 
without knowing the value of x, we cannot tell. Maybe the, maybe the two quantities are equal to each other. Maybe they are not. Who knows? 10 times 25. 10 times 25 is 250. 20 times 25 is going to be 500. So this is 500 minus 15x. We have 350 here. We have 500 here. We can subtract 500 from here. We're comparing 0 versus 150 minus 15x. If x happens to be equal to 10, if x happens to be equal to 10, if x happens to be 10, the answer would be c, because 150 minus 15 times 10 would be equal to 0, which is 7 is this 0. If, if on the other hand, x is, does, does not equal to 10, if x does not equal to 10, the answer will not be c. What the answer would be is a moot point, it's irrelevant, it's not, it's not, it's not the point here. If x happens to be exactly 10, the answer would be c, because you will subtract 150 from the 500, giving you 350. If x is not equal to 10, the answer will not be c, because we cannot tell whether or not x is 10. There is no way to figure out whether x, for, there is no way for us to ascertain the exact value of x. There is no way to figure out if x in fact is 10, therefore the answer is d. Until we know the value of x, we cannot tell. Our answer would be, who the hell knows? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.